largest winter storm of the season potentially up to an estimated eight inches of snow in the Spokane area and an estimated 14 inches in parts of North Idaho. <laughs> Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremlin News at five. I'm Mark Hanrahan and I'm Whitney Ward. So the storm is expected to hit the Spokane area here over the next few hours and we will take a look at just how we're getting ready for this midweek storm and what it's going to mean for your morning commute here here in just a few moments. So we do want to send things over straight away to the chief Tom Sherry for when we know the height of this storm is actually going to hit. It's going to be an overnight storm and then into Thursday. So your commute home tonight, except for the two inches of snow that fell since midnight last night into uh, today, that's your problem. But your real problem, I think, is going to be tomorrow morning. Here we go. Winter storm warnings have been now posted for most areas of the region. We're talking Washington State, North Idaho, and into Western Montana. Locally, uh, we mean in the valley areas, six to eight inches of additional snowfall. In some areas, we already have five to seven inches of snow already on the ground. So the side roads are just going to be very, very difficult to navigate. Up north, portions of North Idaho could see eight to 12 inches of snow. That's not in the mountains. Up in the mountains, you'll see well in excess of 12 inches of snow. Okanagan Highlands, also eight to 12 inches of snow. And if you have to travel I-90 or Stevens Pass, Snoqualmie Pass, hold on folks rethink those plans. We could see 36 plus inches of snow fall in those mountain locations in the Cascades. Dangerous driving conditions for tomorrow, especially in the morning hours. Please, if you don't have to be on the road, don't. Camera out of order. Well, it was that's still a live picture right there of what we're showing you was happening up at uh, Snoqualmie Pass. Already a lot of snow on the roadway. We're at 22 degrees, so we're at the right temperature for the this snow to stick around. I do want to remind you though, as we look at the radar, the snow is falling heavy now in central Washington and the lower Columbia Basin. I-84, say between the Tri-Cities and or even between Walla Walla and uh, Portland area, Mount Hood, uh, it is just really hard to travel. And if you don't need to be on I-84, don't do it. And of course, Interstate 90 from Moses Lake to the west also. Lots of snow falling at this particular time. The heaviest snow will fall overnight here locally in the inland northwest with a low of about 22. And then it gets sloppy on Friday. We'll look for rain, maybe with a little bit of snow and a high of 40. So again, a sloppy, sloppy mess. We dry out and stabilize the snowpack on Saturday. I'll check the rest of your forecast. Come Coming up in a few minutes. Thank you very much. Meantime, here in Spokane, city crews are gearing up for the overnight snowfall, and that includes getting all crew members in place for when the city needs to move into a 24 7 full city plow. Crime News Amanda Rowley found out that it actually takes a lot of work to maintain those trucks alone. She is joining us live now from the Crime News Storm Tracker with more on that part of this story. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Mark and Whitney. Yeah, the Spokane City Streets Department is expecting it will have to shift into that 24 7 full city plow, and that will happen once snowfall reaches four or more inches. We're heading through the uh, the Garland District right now. I want to give you a quick look at the roads everywhere in Spokane. This is what it looks like a little bit of slush, mostly clear. Obviously, the residential areas are a bit more packed full of snow, but a full city plow. That, here's what that means. The city will move to a 24 7 operation with a goal of completing that plow work in about three days. Now, people don't realize the toll the plowing takes on these city trucks. Now, Street Department Director Clint Harris told me they go through a ton of tire chains over the winter season. They replace a lot of other parts on plows and support vehicles just to keep them in service. And they have to be quick about it so there's no time wasted getting the trucks back out on the streets. It takes a lot of maintenance to keep them, the trucks going because the extreme cold is very hard on all the systems on the trucks. The other uh, maintenance on the trucks that most people don't realize is the amount of chains we go through put on that they put on tires and the plow bits. So each driver changes his own chains and, and plow bits as well as fueling his own truck. 
Now he adds that each driver typically does maintenance or changes on their chains every shift. Gosh, it's a lot. I was surprised to hear that. So when you hit the roads tomorrow morning, city crews are going to be plowing those main arterials and hills. And once they move into that full city plow, you can track their progress on the city of Spokane's website. Again, here in the Garland district area, the roads are pretty clear right now, but we know that won't be the case tomorrow. Of course, it's important to make sure you're giving yourself that extra time to get to work tomorrow as well and go a bit slower just to give that extra space to the people in front of you. Reporting from the Storm Tracker in the Garland District, Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. And Spokane County road crews will also have their work cut out for them as the snow starts falling. Those crews are responsible for more than 5,000 miles of road. Krem 2's Ian Smay joining us live tonight with more on the county's effort to keep their roads clear. Ian? County crews will be de-icing and working around the clock to clear the 5,100 lane miles of road that they are responsible for. The roads I am by right now, Palouse Highway and 57th Avenue, are both pretty clear, but it does take some time to get to all of the roads in the county. The Spokane County Roads Department also said that the wide variety of terrain that crews have to deal with complicates things. The county is asking people to give plows at least 50 feet of space and to never pass a plow on the right. Also, don't pass on the left if at all possible. Crews will be working around the clock putting down sand and plowing roads. And according to one county resident, the effort crews have made so far this year has paid off. The plow crew took pity on me and didn't push all this back up for the first time for a while. So yeah, they've been, been pretty good. You know, I can understand on a narrow street, you know, curb to curb, but leave the berm out here. Because half the time people will be walking out in the street rather than on the sidewalk. Perevich also said his street actually gets plowed pretty quick after snow falls as he lives near a local school. Now the county is also preparing for a few pretty dangerous scenarios tomorrow. I'll have more on what those scenarios exactly are coming up at 6 tonight. For now, reporting in Spokane County, Ian Smay, Crime 2 News. All right, Ian, thank you very much. Meantime, across the border, Coeur d'Alene is getting ready to plow its uh, streets for the heavy snowfall. They started earlier today by checking all their equipment and putting out de-icer on the roads. In Coeur d'Alene, they start plowing when there is three inches of snow on the ground, and they are planning to activate a full city plow for what the snow that is forecasted. However, the city says it could take some time before they get to your neighborhood. Keep in mind that we arterials, collectors, and hills are our first priority. Uh, if we get up to eight inches and we have to plow those more, more than once, we do not start in our uh, residential neighborhoods until the arterials and collectors are in good shape. While they're doing their job clearing the roads, they're asking people to do their part to make sure the plow crew's jobs are easier. They are asking people to avoid parking on the street give their plows room and make sure that give you you give yourself time to get to where you need to go without rushing. All right, let's take another live look now at Snoqualmie Pass. This is a different vantage point that was Tom than Tom was just showing you, but another two feet of snow is still expected to hit over the next 24 hours. So just plan ahead and know the pass will likely close at some point. All of that, that two feet of snow is on top of the more than 20 feet they have already had. That is the most snow, by the way, on Snoqualmie Pass in 20 years. The weather has caused countless crashes along the pass, many of them just today. And right now, traction tires are required. Chains as well on vehicles over 10,000 pounds. So oversized vehicles are prohibited. And again, they continue to say that if you don't need to be out traveling, just wait. And the Spokane International Airport also warning that this storm will likely impact flights in and out of the Spokane area. So they do recommend checking with your airline, not with the airport for your flight status. And make sure that you allow additional time to drive to the airport because it will likely take longer. The snow is expected to start falling here in just a few short hours. So remember for the latest forecast and of course how you can prepare, just text the word snow to 509-448-2000. And quickly want to mention Spokane Public Schools sent a text message out to parents mm -hmm. of children in their school saying they'll make any decision on whether or not to delay or cancel classes tomorrow morning starting at 6 a.m. So okay. be sure to tune in to Up With Krem for any updates on that. Mm -hmm. My kids have their fingers crossed, yes. by the way. All right, taking a look at more of our top stories tonight. A Western Washington man has died after being hit by a snowplow. A Whatcom County snowplow hit a 47-year-old man who was walking on the shoulder of the road. The driver of the plow said that he could not see the man until he was about eight feet in front of the plow. 
So we have a clear majority. Congratulations, Councilmember Haley, you are the new mayor. Well, the city of Spokane Valley has just selected a new mayor out in the valley. It's voters who elect council members and then the council votes on the mayor and the deputy mayor. The council selected Pam Haley as their new mayor for this year. She is replacing outgoing mayor Ben Wick, who remains on the city council. Haley has served actually on the city council there in the valley for six years. She's a small business owner, Rod Higgins, who has chosen to serve as the deputy mayor. State Democrats are looking to put the controversial long term care tax on hold until next year. Deductions from paychecks were set to begin this month, but last month Governor Jay Inslee put the payroll tax on pause, saying some kinks still need to be worked out. Well, this week, Democratic House lawmakers pre filed legislation to delay the tax until July of next year. Under the legislation, any premium collected before then would be refunded by the state within 120 days. Trial for one of the accused killers of Jason Fox started today with Newport police officers outlining what happened in the days leading up to their discovery of Fox's body. Claude Merritt is one of the five men who was arrested for the killing of Fox back in October of 2020. Fox was found in a shallow grave near Newport. Newport police chief Mark Duxbury took the stand today and talked about the steps that he and his police force took to find Jason. Merritt is facing charges of first degree murder, first degree kidnapping and making false or misleading statements. His trial will continue tomorrow. Well, hundreds of new COVID cases have been reported yet again in Spokane. This is now the second day in a row for extremely high numbers. The regional health district reporting 669 new cases just today. This is now the third largest number of cases reported in a single day since the beginning of this pandemic. The second largest was yesterday. 89 people are also hospitalized up from yesterday's 78. Today, Governor Jay Inslee laid out how he plans to handle the surge of COVID cases across the state. The big takeaway, he's not considering any sort of restrictions or remote learning for kids. He wants to keep kids in school and the economy rolling, he said, and he is working to make tests more available to Washingtonians. Inslee today announced the state is spending $50 million to buy 5.5 million at home tests for Washington residents. OK, so how will people get those? tests well a couple of different ways the state plans to have a web portal up and running in the next couple of weeks where you can order a test directly to your home they'll also send tests to places like schools and community clinics where people can pick them up in person if they choose so Inslee also addressed whether he plans to pause things like in-person learning as COVID cases surge our paramount duty is education of our children and we think this approach starting with keeping our schools open is consistent with the approach of using these tools that are now available to us as opposed to denying ourselves the things that we want to have in our, in our lives. Good education for our children, a good economy. We think we can have both of those. Governor Inslee was also asked today about whether he's considering requiring teachers to get booster shots and whether he's planning to require kids to get a COVID vaccine to attend school. He said a panel of health experts are discussing adding the COVID vaccine to the list of vaccines required to attend school, but he also said there's nothing imminent on either of those issues, and he acknowledged that he is concerned that if vaccines are required for kids to attend schools, that will ultimately lead to some kids not going to school. Well, the CDC has now changed its COVID guidelines yet again. So what does all of this mean for you? We're answering some of your top COVID questions coming up right after the break.